Welcome back to the channel. I'm Brandon with Davidson Audio and today I wanted to sit down and spend some time talking to you all about another one of our products which is for the 2020 to 2024 Indian Challenger and Pursuits and that will be our passive saddlebag lid harness. Our passive saddlebag lid harness is exactly just that. It's a single run of oxygen-free copper speaker wire that will go from the fairing of the Indian Challenger Pursuits all the way down the backbone to your saddlebag, both left and right. Um, these are pre-cut to length, loomed with quick disconnects that are waterproof for the saddlebags, making it 100% serviceable if you ever take your saddlebags off easily so let's go ahead and show you what's in this packet we're going to start at one end of the harness which is going to be the fairing side and we'll work our way back so as you can see we have a trend with our harnesses we offer them in two different colors here you have the white and the red black we do this to help differentiate left from right so the white is going to be your left and the red black is going to be for the right side which is further identified here with your common uh, car audio colors here so green is going to be rear left and violet is going to be rear right. And as you can see here, we have our, not only our color shrink tube, but we have other shrink tube here to secure the braided expanded loom, which our entire harness is loomed into. And it goes all the way down to where your side covers are at. So again, color coordinated, both the color wire and the shrink tube. And then you go to these, these are um, Deutsch DT style connectors. So it's just a quick disconnect. It's got a rubber seal here, goes into there with the rubber seal on both sides of here. This allows for a quick disconnect of your saddlebag. So this side would stay on the bike. This would go with your saddlebag. And you can see this is a four pin connector. Um, we do that because it's the same connector we use for our passive and active saddlebag harnesses. So say you're like, ah, I only want the lids for right now, but down the road you're like, hey, I want to add, you know, mid base inside of it or a tweeter separate, then we could do the harness and just plug it into here and keep the same harness so that way you don't have to replace the harness. Um, that's just another option that we have. And then from here, this is the part that goes to your saddlebag, exact same braided expanded loom, shrink tube, color coordinated. And we leave this long on this side on purpose because depending on the speaker that you're using as a crossover, you can cut this shorter and solder your crossover directly to it like we do for the passive fairing harness right here for example so we could cut the wire shorter soldered into the crossover and go directly to the speaker or if you just have a coax speaker such as the cicada audio cx six and a half or the hertz sx165 neo which are both really great options we like to use you could take this directly to the speaker cut it to length and you could solder it to the speaker or use quick disconnects and then what we like to do is we like to test the tape this up put a little piece of string tube on it make it look nice and clean what i'm going to do now is take the time to show you installing this harness on your bike so that way if you purchase our audio package you know how to do it yourself like i said this is going to go from the fairing where your amplifier is at all the way down the backbone split to each side cover and then go inside the saddlebags to your speaker so we have this 2023 Indian Challenger here that we are gonna do this install on. We already have one side done, but I wanna show you the process on the other side, how it's gonna go installed, and then how it's gonna look after the fact. To start the saddlebag passive harness install, we're gonna start at the saddlebag and work our way backwards, because that's gonna help set the length and everything. This one's already been done, but I'm gonna walk you through the process of this. So. Any install we do, we're going to paint protect the entire lid because we don't want anything to happen to it. You're going to need an M4, an M5, and an M6. But for this part, we'll just take the lid off with just an M4 and then we'll transfer the stuff over on the workbench. M4 are going to be these two right here for your limit strip. And what I like to do, this isn't really necessary, but I just start these just a few threads because 
you put them in a pile, you set one somewhere, you lose it. It's just easiest to go ahead and screw it back in. Electric locks, if you have a dark horse or anything higher, you can just unplug it from here. And then here you're gonna have four M4s here for the hinge. Again, I just break them loose, which these ones have been put on here really tight. And then this is just gonna slide right on down and out past the uh, hinge. And those bolts I will just put back inside the bag because we're gonna take this and go put it on the workbench. Before removing the saddlebag, you got an electrical connector here, which is on the underside of this side cover. You can just take it off, make sure you pull it out of this little retention spot here by your shock adjustment. And then it's two six millimeters that will take the bag off. And you, the bag will be supported by the two standoff feet at the bottom of it, but I still like to put pressure on it to keep it up against the bike. Because the last thing you want is to undo this and the bag fall, hit the ground. As you can see, I'm supporting it. I'll grab it here, and then I'll just pick up and take the bag to the workbench. Now the part, it's easier to route this into the saddlebag first, so that way you can set this length the same as the OEM, route it through the OEM channel up here and then we'll put the lid on it. So the one you want is this female connector here. You're gonna see it's flush and you can tell because this part of the wire is super long and exposed. So this is the one female connector, this wire you're gonna route into the saddlebag. The first part of doing this is going to be right here at the OEM connector. So what we do now is you're just gonna take your knife and right along the OEM spot here, you're just gonna put a slit in it. Then you'll be able to fish your wiring through it. What I'm gonna say is once you get through it, just kind of hold on to the braided loom so that way it doesn't get bound up with the bulkhead. So what I like to do is just make it about the same length as there. And then what we'll do here to help keep these wires together is I will take a couple bands of exterior Tessa tape and I'll put a couple spots of it on here to hold them together. That's good right there. I don't want to go too close here because the connectors are gonna go different ways. So just a couple bands there. I like to use um, interior exterior Tessa tape or JK tape. This is what it's meant for. It's not gonna get all gooey and nasty like electrical tape. Now what we have to do is you've got this wire track here. These are two three millimeters, four millimeter, and this is a six millimeter here. We're gonna take this track out, follow the OEM wiring down through here, so that way it looks as OEM as possible. And then we'll route it through here and then we'll go get the other lid, swap it out and keep on going. This one right here has two three millimeters that have a plate here with welded nuts. So you can just hold the backside, break this loose. As you can see, you got your two small three mils with that welded plate here. It's a plate with two welded nuts. Then we're gonna go to our four millimeter. There's two here at the bottom. These are just plastic threaded. So this is where I would say definitely be cautious to not, when you go to tighten it back up, don't strip it out. And then our last one is going to be the six millimeter right here. Gonna break this one loose. And now our track is completely removable. This is the fun part because you get to route this wiring all the way through it. I like to just go ahead and push it through up first. And then at least get this loom or the shrink tube on the loom past it first. And then you'll see that this track goes on top of this one. So I will usually start at one side and fight with it because getting two wires to go inside of here is a lot of fun. Any of the New York numbers I don't answer anymore, they're all spam.
we have completely routed the harness. Bill, I need you to get in an actual view to where you can see I, the back over here. I can see inside the bag perfectly from that angle. All right, so we've got the wiring harness. This is the different way we do it to avoid the bulkheads now. So you can see it comes right through. We follow the OEM track all the way up and then we come in here. So it gives you the best OEM look and fit and finish. The biggest thing is when you go to do this, you're gonna fight with it a little bit. I like to get this part because this track goes down first and then this one here goes on top of it. So I'll start this one and loosely put these in here just enough to catch a thread and then poke the wire down in it, which I've got to push that side in. Just like that. And you'll have to do that. And then you'll get that side down, sit it down here. Then you'll push this side down, get this six millimeter started, get these started. You'll push the wire all up into that track. Then you'll start screwing them in. Again, these are plastic thread. So just snug them up good. These ones, the six millimeter and these two threes, go into a metal uh, bracket, like this is a metal bracket, this goes into the hinge. You can get a little bit more torque on them, <clears throat> but don't go crazy. They don't need to be like ridiculously over tight. So at this point, we're ready to transfer over the stuff to our new lid, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. We, we do provide OEM lids for customers. We order them in. Usually I order a couple of the basic colors and we'll pre-modify them for you. So if you buy a package from us that's pre-set up in tune and you opt to get the lids from us, this is how you'll receive them. We'll send them either in the OEM box or in another box, all set up, ready to go. So here is a prime example. You'll get them all wrapped up in the same OEM blanket. Paint protection film put on it. The grill is on it as well. Speakers already loaded, pre-modified, all cleaned up, ready to install yourself on your bike. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna install it on this lid for you, get it all buttoned up and get it back on the bike. We're gonna transfer the last few things off this lid, the OEM non-speaker lid to the OEM power band six and a half inch lid. First thing I like to do is just pull the paint protection film off a little bit. You're gonna take these two side cover, hinge covers off, simple four millimeter, set the bolts aside, set that cover aside, put the bolts with it. Then this is where you can take those two limit strap four mils off Set them aside and you're transfer over to a five millimeter because whether it's electric lock or not, there's two five millimeters, one on each side. These I will leave in this part. I just set this aside. Then here you're gonna take the lid. You can pull the paint protection film back a little bit, push the lock cylinder out, set that down. And then you gotta take the seal out because Indian doesn't give you another seal for that but they do give you another lid seal for the actual lid itself. So this lid seal, you do not need to retain. The order in which I like to do this, and I found it to be the best way for me personally, is I will bolt the lid to the bag first, and then I will route the wire down through here, plug it into the electric lock, bolt that together, and then we do everything else. So you gotta kind of hold it at a weird angle. This, you'll just pull the seal back. So the, uh, they're not in the way of the hinges. Get the first one started. Usually I'll start the first one in the front and the last one all the way in the rear. That way it aligns the hinge up for the rest of them. And again, you're just loosely putting these in here. You're not torquing anything down as of yet, just very loosely is you want to make sure all four of them line up, but then also you'll see you got threads, but then you got this part that's bigger. You want to make sure that that will make it through the lid because that's like an alignment dowel and then screw it in. Sometimes you get too crazy, the plastic will kick over and you'll start screwing it in and this will catch the plastic. So that's why you want to make sure that you line them up loosely first and then they go all the way in like this one, we're good. I can tighten them all up. And then this again, you really just need a, you can use a ratchet, I guess, depending on your grip, grip strength, you can just use a screwdriver like this. I haven't had an issue doing this. Um, they've held on just fine for me. But then here I'll jump to the hinge cover. So that way the seal isn't in the way for me. 
Um, it only goes on really one way. This opening gap will face towards the bottom of the bag. So you just slide it towards the back. Make sure you peel your paint protection film down so that way that doesn't get caught because we have that happen all the time. And I guess actually you can push the seal down. I'll just take one of them. Again, very loosely and then you're good to go there. So now let's get this bag repositioned and let's get our harnesses in here. The first one I'm going to worry about is the OEM lock harness because like I was telling Bill a minute ago, if I don't know if you can see it, but you look really closely in here. There's just two little pins sitting there. There's nothing really to guide it. And you see there's one little part up here in the middle that's got like a slit in it. The harness here, if you, if we can get it on camera, you'll see there's like a little guide here, but this has to go in those pins. So I like to do this off because if you don't and you misalign that, you can break the pins off and it is not fun. And these locks are $250 and I'm sure you don't wanna buy another set of locks for no reason. Before that goes on there, transfer over our seal. Um, usually what I'll do is I'll rotate it. You can tell it's a dirtier side, so I'll put it inside. And just make sure you push it on there, rotate it around, you're good to go. These um, bag latch covers are side specific. So if you take both of them off, you have to test fit them to see which one's which. The locks themselves are not though, they are universal. It's just these handles. You're just gonna push it in. I like to hold it from the outside. And what's cool about our tape is our paint protection film will also hold it for us. So here again, I'll even go as far as pulling this back out because I'm really cautious about this. You don't wanna force it, you just wanna click it in there. And you're gonna set it right back on here. Make sure it goes behind that. You take your five millimeter and this part you really want to just loosely do them one at a time just like start this one go to the other side because if you tighten one down too far too quick you'll kick this and it won't line up right so kind of just go back and forth get it a little tight go back to the other one that one snug snug that one make sure it works it's where it needs to be then go ahead, torque that down, torque this one down, and then make sure everything's working as it should. And this is where I was saying, we'll push the wiring harness back in there, make sure our slack is at this side so it doesn't put tension on that. Then here, we'll gauge where we want our wiring to go. So it's gonna go here, here, and then we're gonna bring it over to here, which this one, we're gonna solder it on here. So I'm gonna cut it here, and then I'm gonna test the tape this and put a piece of shrink tube over it so that way we can make sure it looks nice and clean. This is all installed here. As you can see, our speaker wire goes down to this OEM track, and we like to test the tape it because it gives it that nice OEM look here, it's shrink tube. Now we solder our speakers here when we do a self-install. If we ship this package to you, we would include ring terminals here or spade terminals for you to put on here so that way you don't have to worry about soldering. It's just something we do. It's a really good connection that we don't have to worry about. But if you had us installed, this is how it would look. Now we're going to do the last part of the saddle bag. We're going to go back to our four millimeter, put our limit strap on here, and then we're going to get this bag installed back on the bike. got the bike or the bag resting back on here we're just going to go ahead and unclick it and we're going to scoot it into position again just take your bolts loosely start them and the biggest thing you want to make sure is that your rubber washer on each side is there you're going to get your bag started get it situated i like to finger tighten these first and then we will 
torque them on down. Again, this is a six millimeter. And as you can see from the inside with this all put in there, looks nice, clean. Unless you knew what you were looking for, you really wouldn't know what to look for. So we'll go ahead, we'll get this double lap. We'll pull our paint protection off so that way you can see that nice OEM lid. Love the fit and finish of these. And then we're gonna top this one off with our Davidson Audio lid covers. Biggest thing is they're not side specific, but where the sticker is, go ahead and face it towards the back, put it on there. I recommend putting these on with the lid closed because this, once these are on here, like they are, a, they're not easy to open back up. Um, so again, just close your lid, double click, decal to the rear, put them on there, protects the top of your saddlebag lid from scuffs or whatever and it looks super nice and yes these are speed rated i have maybe once or twice taken these up to a high rate of speed with them on the bike just like this and they do hold on so you can ride with these on here if you're getting like caught in a downpour of rain how much it will muffle the sound it'll muffle it a little bit but it'll help keep the water from getting directly on or inside your bags because these go all the way down past the lip in the front all the way over. So if you want to know more about our lid covers, make sure you go over to that video and watch those. Let's go ahead and run the harness from the bags forward. This is a fairly easy part, but I like to show you the best way to do this. So that way you know what to avoid, where to route it, and make sure you zip tie it up very nicely and securely. All right, to go from your saddlebags to the fairing, you're gonna have these two. These are what we consider male connectors. Yes, I know it looks like a female socket, but if you look inside there, there are two male pins for this one. This is the passive fairing har or saddlebag harness, so there's two male pins in there. Again, white with a green shrink tube is the left or clutch side. The red and black wire with the violet shrink tube is your right or your brake side. So if you're sitting on it, left is your clutch, right is your brake. So what we're going to do here is I will start with the right side, seeing that you guys are right there. Easiest way to do this is you're going to take this, you're just going to take your wiring, set it aside. And I like to route this up through here and then you're going to pull it up. And then I like to just plug them in because this connector is going to end up like right here is where I'm going to leave it to route it. So that way, we have a little bit of slack there because when you go to ride with this, you're gonna actually push this connector in here like that, but you're gonna want some slack to be able to pull it out. So leave it right there like that. And if you come up here, this is where I really wanna harp on how we run this. You're gonna bring this back behind this push tab. This is your ECU. So if you're ever curious about taking this off, just watch our video about uh, with M3 and Mad Monkey, or Mad Monkey and Hoonies where we took ours out. You're gonna route this around here. And then what I want, is for y'all to take this harness you're gonna come underneath this harness and you're gonna route it all the way around you don't want to pull that guitar string tight that's where i was talking about that slack and on this harness you're going to take it and you're just going to push it right into this little holder right here and then we will continue routing this all the way up now we're going to focus on the clutch side and right here by the shock you have like a little retention hold down part there I like to plug this one in here. This is where I was talking about leaving it back here. Because as you can see, we have different lengths. So again, I plug this in. And for here, I like to route it between the frame and this um, reservoir line for the shock. We're gonna zip tie it to here to keep it up out of the shock. We're gonna follow it all the way around. And then I like to pull this antenna wire on the inside there of this fuel overflow line. And then we're gonna follow that with our speaker wire harness because here, when we jump from here, we're gonna put a zip tie here and then we're gonna zip tie these two together all the way up the backbone. So let me grab a couple of zip ties. We'll zip tie this up, get it cut, zip tie here, and then go all at the backbone. So here, um, if you can see on this side, 
I just do it enough over here to where the connector just will dangle out because when we're done with it, when you make your connection, it'll just sit in here. You can start your zip ties up top and just push them down. I do at least two, most likely three. So I'll bring this one as far down as possible, secure it, do a middle one. And then one up here towards the top. And then we'll switch over to bigger ones. And then I will route. And there's a reason why I bring the head on this side is because when you bring it all the way up here, I will tighten it. But once you cut it, which we got a fancy dancy zip tie cutter, you can rotate this back this way and put it underneath. If you're over here, it's kind of hard to get it past there, but that way it gets the head of the zip tie up out of the way. No, you do not need a zip tie gun. It just makes it easier. I like zip tie guns because what a zip tie gun does, it pulls a zip tie tight and then cuts it flush. So as you can see, there's nothing there to cut yourself on. I really like it. It's a fancy dancy tool to use. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna route this harness all the way up this channel. We're gonna continue following it. You're essentially gonna follow that um, antenna wire. So I like to tuck it down in here with the OEM harness. You're just gonna keep on following it all the way up. And then take a couple of eight inch zip ties. Same thing, we're gonna zip tie them up and then cut them and rotate them back. sure that you're watching out for pivot points items that move yes the shock does move a little bit but with us zip tying it to here and the connector being here it allows for some movement it's not tight enough to where this will affect it and then here you're making sure that it routes around underneath and you really want to zip tie it up to this OEM harness all the way up all the way up into the neck I mean I got a zip tie all the way up here there's one two three four five six seven zip ties up the backbone and in reality we do all that to hold it really secure to this harness keep it up out of the way but also kind of make it look like it was supposed to be there again this connector is here quick disconnect so boom boom your saddlebag comes off and there's one more thing i want to touch base on on this other side is so like we were saying when you make your connection here you know so you can take your bags off here and here then you can plug that back in. This will get plugged in here. And when you go put your side cover on, just take this connector and push it right there. It's not gonna contact the belt. That's why I had you to leave just a little bit of room here. And then when you go to service it or take the bag off, just pull this connector out, disconnect, disconnect, and you're good to go. Let's go to the front real quick. And here you are, our speak, rear speaker wires are here. This is our power and ground from an earlier video. Sometimes, depending on how tight you'll make this, one will be longer than the other. For us, when we do these installs, we'll bring this back and we'll shorten it up to match and then we'll land everything. So, I mean, as far as the install is concerned, this is how you're gonna install this wiring harness. That's gonna wrap this video up. I hope that this video helps you understand the install part of this. So that way, if you buy an audio package from us, you know how to install this part of the harness, secure it properly, route it, make sure it's not in the way of anything. And that way it just helps walk you from the start to the finish of your audio install because 
The entire purpose of these audio packages I've made are for the DIY people. So I wanted to make sure that y'all understand exactly how all of this stuff gets installed, what it is for, and what application. So I hope that you enjoy this video. It was informative, helped you through this process, and that it helps you make the decision if this is the right harness for your application. So with that being said, I'm Brandon with Davidson Audio located here in beautiful Panama City, Florida.